There has been a lot of talk about Overwatch 2's power creep problem, and many are citing that there is too much heals, too much damage, and things are becoming more and more broken. So when exactly did this power creep take place, how do we fix it, or is there no power creep problem at all? This is all we gotta break down, but if you could break down that subscribe button. Alright, I tried. Anyways, let's jump right in. So when people mainly talk about the power creep that happened as of Overwatch 2, there's a couple of things that primarily pushed along this so-called power creep problem. And number one was the passives. The default passives on every single roll, the tanks getting less CC, the DPS originally getting movement speed and reload, now only reload. And the supports getting an auto passive heal. This just automatically raises the power level of everything in different directions, but it was a bump to power creep. And we did see some amount of nerfs to compensate for this, like when Soldier got super nerfed at the start of beta because he was just too strong in the new passive system. Same thing with Genji, but we didn't see nerfs across the board, so some characters just got buffed relative to their Overwatch 1 counterpart. And they never really got any nerfs to compensate. They were just flat out better than they were straight up. And a lot of them were already good in Overwatch 1. So that was one power creep. But then the other power creep is the reworks that happened mainly to the tank role. The tank got just completely warped and changed to a super tank DPS hybrid. And while this doesn't always mean that tanks can take over a game or carry or anything like that, some of them have gotten powerful in very particular ways that can be frustrating to play against. Namely, their difficulty to kill and lack of benefit in farming off of them, because I forgot to mention the passive ult generation that you get less of on tanks. So when Overwatch 1, fighting tanks, shooting tanks, and gaining ultimate off tanks was all viable strategies, in Overwatch 2, the entire game shifted to where you don't even really focus tanks anymore. Most of the time, it's actually incorrect to even shoot at them. And that was definitely a huge change and contributed to the power creep of the game as a whole. Now also we got to talk about the new heroes add to the game and I do want to make it clear that in a lot of games as time goes on characters get more and more busted mainly because people feel hype when something is really busted really unique and as things get more and more unique more hype characters just become completely unbalanced compared to their counterpart we're seeing that a lot in games like League right now where the new characters are just like old characters but a whole bunch of new abilities and even more powerful and it has happened somewhat to Overwatch 2 I think namely characters like Kiriko and Sojourn were really really busted really strong on release still very strong now but especially on release these characters were just completely outside anything we've seen and their kit was just insane but I don't necessarily think that this always happened I mean Junker Queen was a bit busted on release but I don't think that she's inherently busted as a character Alari seems good but not completely broken Life Weaver was actually super underpowered and I think Ramatra is mostly fine not something that just breaks the game wide open and even though some of these characters seem super strong potentially this happened in overwatch one as well right there were characters that were super giga busted on release in overwatch specifically like brig on release was super busted so this isn't necessarily an overwatch 2 thing this is just an introducing new characters thing and uh i think they actually got it better than a lot of other games to be honest comparatively i don't really think the new characters in particular are what's breaking the game wide open although the combinations or the increasing combinations of characters will raise the power ceiling of any composition or game overall over time so that's kind of unavoidable like the more possible combinations that exist the more potential there are for broken combinations in the game that's just freaking math now that being said i do believe that life weaver will increase power creep specifically because life weaver came out and was super underpowered they had to buff him multiple times before he's good at all and now they released ilari intentionally super powerful with the intent to nerf her very very quickly after release which they've already done just to reel her back so they are now going to start releasing characters that are giga busted and probably designing characters that are giga busted and then reeling them back as needed so because life weaver was so weak they are now super pushing power creep like power creep is going to be a lot bigger now than it ever was before because of how weak and bad life weaver was and the thing about this is you got to understand that that's not really necessarily blizzard's fault or the devs fault this is our fault this is people's fault because you got to understand People don't like weak shit. I know that that's kind of like a really basic statement, but no one likes a weak character. No one gets hyped for a weak character, an uninspired character. If a character has cool abilities, but they don't perform, people don't like it. People like power. Everyone likes powerful things, powerful characters. 
And you just have to look at Alari to prove it. Everyone is super high off of Alari because she's powerful and she's fun to play. And Life Fever was fun to play, but way too weak, so people just kind of lost interest. And while this is fun, everyone loves power, in the short term, it brings a lot of fun, but potentially in the long term, there's the health of the game that is kind of left unhindered. Like, everyone loves a cool, busted character when it comes out, but then really quickly afterwards, they're like, wait a second, the game is getting kind of broken, what the hell? But you gotta think about it from a developer's point of view, they're not gonna release a game that is healthy for the game that generates less hype, because because if no one plays it, then who cares, right? They would rather people be hyped and play it at the very least. And that's really kind of the balancing act, right? How do you make characters that are both interesting and strong, but not too strong? I think they actually did fairly well with Alari, but it's a pretty hard balance to hit oftentimes. They might be asking, okay, well, why not some nerfs to kind of balance out the roster? Why not some like universal nerfs, a nerf to heals, a nerf to damage, a nerf to ult charge to just kind of really balance things out? But the reality is, just like people like power, no one likes nerfs. Everyone is all happy and super hyped when their character gets buffed. It doesn't really matter what it is. People are just happy, just in general and even if you don't like a character you would rather a character you don't like get buffed than the character you main get nerfed and that's just human nature no one wants their mains to get nerfed and if they did a universal nerf across the board i think that would be enough for people to literally get mad enough to like walk away from the game which they never want to do they would rather just keep buffing and buffing and buffing and this is not an overwatch specific thing this is a game specific thing and i know this causes problems in the game but once again it's feeding into the dopamine and with games kind of coming and going and other options being available to you games have to constantly kind of find that balancing act between giving people what they want and then doing what is right for the game and oftentimes doing what is right for the health of the game is not what people want in the moment i know it's a really hard thing to balance but keep in mind that if you're watching this video you're in a really really small minority like most people are super ultra casual in this game or only play it every once in a while and those characters don't like it when their characters or mains get nerfed and they really like it when their character and mains get buffed and yeah it's just kind of the way things are but this really brings me to the last point and the ultimate conclusion of the video. Do we actually have a power creep problem? I know I talked about a lot of the reasons why there are some power creep problems, but is there a legitimized power creep problem in the game right now? And I would actually say no. And the reason I say no is because a lot of the things that I felt were really problematic about the power level of the game have actually gotten removed or nerfed. Like a lot of the one shots with damage boost or one shot Widow or one shot Roadhog, like a lot of these things, these truly problematic things that if anything is powerful, if anything is a power creep, quote unquote, it's one shots and that has been in the game forever. And to reel that back, to nerf that substantially, that's a big deal. That's a huge deal and a huge nerf to the power creep problem. People don't really think about that as like an objectively super powerful thing that is getting kind of nipped in the bud. But it is, and it's actually a big deal. But what people aren't really liking now is the type of metas that exist. And I think that there are certain pockets of power, but mainly people don't like it when metas exist that are being enabled by that power. It's not about the power itself, it's about the metas. And I talked about one shots, which is one that people really, really dislike. But also right now we're seeing like a super sustained meta with characters like Arissa and Bastion and things like that. And people really, really dislike that because it feels like nothing dies. It feels like this tank is unkillable. And this is the pocket of power that I talked about, right? Tanks being super, super hard to kill, hard to focus. And that's okay when certain tanks are meta. And that's okay when we have a certain meta that doesn't rely off of constantly over or hyper sustaining certain characters like Arissa. But when you fall into those metas, all of a sudden you can really feel the problematic aspects of that power creep. And I think that that's the most important thing. Characters like Arissa, Bastion, maybe Sombra, Far Mercy, One Shots. These are the characters and things that they need to make sure don't become too powerful. And it's not about how strong things are objectively overall. It's about how strong certain things that are super unfun to play against or with are in the meta. How strong are these? If they're too strong, people are gonna have a really frustrating time. Doesn't have as much to do with objective power level because I do think that Blizzard has done actually a decent job with power creep. I know that that seems strange, but look at any other AAA title, any other game that's live service, and you'll see just how power creep the game can be. Now, in addition to that, right now we're in like a hyper sustained meta, but we were also super frustrated in like an insta dead one shot meta. So you got to find a balance between 
things that never die right and just like a trade of resources just non-stop trading resources things never dying spamming each other and things dying instantaneously like there has to be a balance right and it's really up to the devs to make sure that the things that create the insta dead experience are not that strong and the things that create the never die experience are not that strong namely arissa should like never be meta but this is really what the devs need to balance in my opinion in order to make everybody happy and not care as much as objective power creep or power level of everybody because really that is not the biggest problem in my opinion but definitely let me know down below if you agree or disagree with my take is there any other opinion you have about power creep and the overall shift from overwatch 1 to overwatch 2 let me know in the comments down below and please smash the like subscribe because i'm trying to get to that fat 70k and i'm only uh, a little bit away so yeah anyways thank you so much for coming by and i'll see you next time